Yay! You're in section 2.4. All right. I love this one. If you guys don't know about Wolfram Alpha Ayat, please, please go to it. You're asking yourself, what? A math teacher wants you to go get answers? Yes, because by answers you learn, okay? It's only if you do it right, okay? If you do it wrong, okay, all you're doing is copying answers. If you do it right, you're able to find out what's right and what's wrong. So please, check out Wolfram Alpha. You can do put anything you want. It's kind of like the Google of math. It's super cool. All right, pass that. Let's get going. We're going to talk about rates of change. And hopefully you already know about rates of change. We're going to talk about rates of change. We're going to talk about tangents. We're going to talk about slopes. We're also going to talk about something that's kind of new. We're going to talk about a secant slope that should be also on that list. In fact, that's what we're going to talk about first. Okay. So as I'm going through, here we go next. Okay. Average rate of change. All right. So you should know average rate of change. You've been hearing it since Algebra 1. Okay. So an average rate of change... Okay, for a quantity over excuse, for a quantity over a period of time is the amount of change divided by the amount of what? Okay, so just change it to what it says. Amount of the quantity, how it changed. So we'll do like delta Q for quantity, okay, over the change in time. Oh, that should look familiar. And they talk about what it means in general. And they talk about on a function, it's your change in your Y values over the change in your X values. All right. And that should also look familiar, right? So that should be your slope formula, right? Remember that from Algebra 1, way back 8th grade, right? Y2 minus Y1, X2 minus X1, right? That's what we're going to talk about. Except we're going to talk about it in a completely different way, okay? Because we're going to talk about it, you know, from not just linear equations, but all equations have an average rate of change from a certain point of view, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so this first example problem, they say, find the average rate of change over the interval 1, 3. All right, so again, average rate of change, average rate of change. I just found out that's the same thing as delta y over delta x, okay. which is then going to be equal to uh, f of 3 minus f of 1, right? You're changing your y's over your change in your x's. You would go ahead and plug in f of 3. f of 3 is 2724 minus f of 1. f of 1 is 1 minus 1, 0. 3 over 3 minus 1, which is 2, which is then equal to 12. That's it. It's not that hard, okay? See, it's not even a hard algebra, okay? Calculus is easy. Here we go. All right, so for this next one, here you got, uh, I'm going to give you a graph. Here's this graph here. And they give you what the average rate of change here it is, delta P over delta T. Yeah, it's funny, right? So what I want you guys to do is make a little table here. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to make this top one be, I want this one to be interval. And this one's going to be delta P over delta T. All right. So, again, P is the number of flies. T is time in days. So, they already gave you uh, the interval. Oops. They gave you the interval 23 to 45 for your time. And they said that that's about 9. I want you to go ahead and I'm going to uh, pause the video. I want you to check out the interval and do your best to estimate from 23 to 40 and from 23 to 35 and from 23 to 30 there. And basically what you got to do is you got to go ahead and find your points estimate what your y value is and find out your change in y over your change in x or change in time okay and give me some answers here and we'll hopefully we'll match all right we'll see you in a few seconds all right well i hope these are your answers okay about 10.6 13.3 and 15.7 but what you have to take away from this is what do these numbers mean okay again change in flies with a change in time so over these 17 days, you had about 
13, 11 flies per day being born. Okay, over these 12 days, you had 13.3 flies being born. And then this it went over here over the course of seven days. Okay, it has 15.6, 15.7 flies being created a day. And again, to give you an idea what this looks like, look, I, cr I graphed each of these secant lines, and that's what these are called, are your secant lines. The reason why they're called secant lines is because it goes through two points. Okay, so we created a secant line, one here, one here, one here, and we found the slope of each of those lines. And it should make sense, look, your slope keeps getting steeper and steeper and steeper, so back to algebra one, if your slope is getting steeper, your slope is getting bigger. It's kind of interesting, right? Cool. Now what I provided to you on this next slide over here is just a nice clean copy of the same exact thing so that you can see this, right? Is that my slope keeps getting steeper and steeper the closer my interval is. That's, again, that's an interesting one, okay? It's interesting, my secant slope keeps changing like that. Hmm, let's go ahead and take a look here. Now this is the meat and potatoes of what I really want you guys to learn today, okay? So, what we're going to do here is we're going to start off by, all right, so again, this is what I want as far as my meat and potatoes. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, sketch and draw the secant from 2 comma 4 to a point h units to the right. So quick, let's sketch this. Sketch x squared. We're going to sketch x squared. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put in all right, 2 comma 4. This will not be to scale. Here's 2. Here's 4. Okay, to a point h units to the right. h units to the right. So here we go. So here I'm at 2, and I'm going to go h units to the right. That's h units. So that means this measurement is h. So what's this point going to be? This point is going to be 2 plus h. I go ahead and take this point up to here. There's that. And then I'm going to go over here. Now I need to figure out what is this. So again, I go ahead and plug in 2 plus h into my function. My function then becomes 2 plus h squared. That's what that value should be, right? 2 squared got me 4. 2 plus h is going to be 2 plus h squared. Okay, so I did that, catch it in. Now they want me to find the difference quotient. All right, well, I can do that. So when I do that, I have the change in y over the change in x, which is then going to equal, okay, 2 plus h squared minus 4 over 2 plus h minus 2. All right, well, I go ahead and I expand this out. I get 2 plus uh, let's see here, 2 plus a, oh, not 2, 4 plus 4h plus h squared minus a 4 all over, the 2's cancel out, just h. Hopefully you can see here the 4's go away. I can factor out an h, and what I'm left with, after I cancel out the h's, is 4 plus h. And that is what my slope is. That's my change and y over change in x is 4 plus h. Well, that's kind of cool. All right. Again, you got to think about the, what is that saying? That's saying that if I take this secant line right here, draw that secant line, okay, the slope of that line, the slope of that line is going to equal to 4 plus h. And it doesn't matter how far h goes out. How cool is that? Mind-blowing right? Okay, so here's what I need you guys to do. What I'm going to have you guys do is I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, but I ran out of room here for you, or if you can, try and sketch over here for negative 3, 9, all right? And then try and come up with a general rule for a and f of a and see what you get, all right? And we'll come back and talk about the last question in a second. All right, I'll pause. All right, so what I gave up you gave to you here was the 
work down here for finding out the secant slope okay for a negative three nine and a point you know h units to the right all right then i started looking at the repeat for any point a comma f of a and realized that there's not enough room here so you're going to need another sheet of paper and i have another blank slide here for us so here are two points f of a and f of a plus h okay and i'm going to go ahead and change this into a big giant delta y over the change in x all right so when I do this, a plus uh, this is f of a plus h, so this would be a plus h squared minus a squared all over and uh, a plus h minus a. And I go ahead and quick expand out my a plus h squared. I get a squared plus 2ah plus h squared. Uh, minus an a squared all over the a's cancel I'm left with h and then, then I go in equal and so then I keep going and I say the a squared cancel and again h factors out and I'm left with 2a plus some h is my slope you may be thinking what does that mean what does that do well what does it mean is that if I create any secant slope, I just found a formula that tells me the slope of any secant point. If I know what my x value is going to be to start with, and I'll point just a little bit to the right. Huh. That's interesting. I wonder, I wonder what, what we can do with that. We'll find out shortly. Okay. But this is here. How can we... How can the difference quotient for the slope of a tangent line be made closer to the slope of it? Oop, this needs to say tangent. I need to say secant. So cross that out and put secant. So how can the difference quotient for slope of a secant line be more be made closer to the slope of a tangent line? Huh. So what is a tangent line? A tangent line is it only touches one point, right? It touches one point only. I want to make this point h get super 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 close to negative three huh super close super super close huh super close so what i say is well what happens if instead of i change this and i want to find out the slope of a tangent line, and I want to get super close. What do we have that got super close? We had a limit, right? And what if I want to say h goes to zero? That's what we're going to do. h goes to zero, because I want h to get closer and closer to zero, because I don't want it to be closer and closer and closer to not, you know, being next to or to the right of our point. And then I keep doing my difference quotient. I take my difference quotient. My difference quotient was, you know, I could do f of a plus h, any a I wanted to, minus f of a, you know, y2 minus y1. And then I have a plus h minus a. But what I notice then is that this is the same thing as saying the limit as h goes to 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. And that is what is cool. Here's what's cool. Why is this cool? Okay. This formula right here. Okay. It's called the limit definition of a derivative. Of a derivative. We'll talk about derivatives later. Okay. But this right here, what makes this cool is that I can now find the slope at any point on any graph with that formula right here that's amazing because here's the deal because slope changes and that's what's gonna be crazy and this is what's the exciting part we're about to get exciting all right so real quick we'll just get more familiar with tangent lines okay rates of change estimate the slope at each point x comma y so over here okay so when I draft graph this okay I'm gonna leave that to you okay you graph this here find me the slope at there slope of that graph. I'm going to leave that for you when I pause the video one last time. And then over here, 
the x comma y they want you to sketch a tangent line at each point so you gotta imagine a point where it's coming and it's just gonna kiss the graph and run away like a little five-year-old okay you're gonna kiss somebody real fast and run away all right so then we have uh i want you to do b on your own and see if your answers match all right finally i hope those are your answers your tangent slope is negative two okay and that uh, there's your tangent line that's right there on part b all right here's your homework good luck god bless and we'll go ahead and see you next time and uh, as always leave a summary of, of what you learned specifically I'm gonna be looking for is what's the difference between secant slope and tangent slope all right bye